Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking through Cisco Packet Tracer 11.2.1.4 titled Configuring Static NAT. To begin we'll open up our Packet Tracer activity and we see that we have our pre-configured network here for us. Um, the scenario is that in IPv4 configured networks clients and servers use private addressing. Um, before packets with private addressing can cross the internet they need to be translated to public addressing. Um, servers that are accessed from outside the organization are usually assigned both a public and a private static IP address. In this activity, we will configure static NAT so that outside devices can access an inside server at its public address. Um, so I think the simplest way to really look at this is think of the PC as you and think of the server as Google. I'm trying to get to Google's website to run a search for whatever. Um, so you are connected directly to your ISP and your ISP is handling a lot of the NAT for you. That's all pretty much handled. Um, but this remote portion of the network here is not yet set up for NAT. They have their own router that they're going to handle NAT once they have it configured. So the problem that we're running into and we'll test this really quickly, is that these outside devices across the internet cannot access that server, whether it be a web server, a mail server, a file server, FTP server, whatever the case may be. We have no access across the internet. So we're going to go ahead and set up static NAT for that router on for that server on this router. Um, so one thing that we want to make sure is that our so we know that our PC has NAT working correctly. We're going to try to ping directly to that router instead of going all over to the server. Let's test to the router. And we get those replies so we know that our NAT is working correctly because we're able to get across the internet to that router. So the problem there lies somewhere in this portion of the network where it's not getting translated for a public address. So let's go ahead and take a look at the router and see what kind of configuration it has. And as we look through the current running configuration we're not seeing anything indicating any kind of network address translation occurring. And then we can go ahead and give it a show IP route command. And this will show us the routes that this router knows about. Um, we should not be seeing the PC or the laptop on here yet. And we want to verify that NAT is not being used. And the absolute best way to do that is to give a show IP NAT translations. And when it does not pop up with any information there, that means there's nothing built into the records. So there's no, no NAT translating going on here. So now that we know it's not set up, we want to go ahead and configure it. So we want to create a static translation to map the server to its outside address. We want to map the server's public inside ad or private inside address to its public outside address. So we'll go ahead and come up to the global configuration mode and create a static translation from the inside address to the public outside address. All right, so we have that. That does not mean that our NAT is set up properly to work yet, though. The other thing that we need to do is configure interfaces on the router so the router knows this section is my private or my inside and this section is my public or outside. So we need to tell it this is my private, my inside, this is my public or my outside. And to do that, first we need to go ahead and come into the interfaces. So our private or our inside is G00. 
and all we need to do is tell it. For NAT, this is your inside. I think it's serial 000. zero, zero. And so we need to tell it this is your outside, your public side. Alright. And so that's all it really takes to get a just a single static NAT set up on the router. So then the next thing we want to do is to ping and make sure that we have access now. So we'll start with PC1 again. And we're going to go ahead and ping the server's public address now, the outside address. And there we go. So that first packet, because of the way packet tracer software works, first packet builds the tables and gets everything set up. And then after that, we have communication flowing freely. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing from the laptop. We'll just ping. And it immediately gets access. All right, so that's a good thing. So what if we try to load the web page? And there we go, there's our server web page. If we did the same thing from PC1, we should get the exact same web page. And there we go. So there's that single static NAT is all it took to get this active and accessible across the internet. Um, we'll hop back into R1. It looks like one of the last portions of this, the last portion actually, is to check our NAT translations. So let's go ahead and give the show IP NAT translation command. Makes it a little bit bigger so we can see everything. And here we see that we now have NAT translations occurring across these ports, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 80 for our web, our web server there. So that looks like that covers about everything. Um, if we wanted to, we could also come in and take a look at the statistics. And so we have three translations, one static that we set up, two dynamic, which are the PC and the laptop. There we told what, what the outside and inside interfaces are. All right. So that should cover everything. Um, should be sitting at 100% completion. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them for me below, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.